I want to explain why I'm voting Labour on December the 12th. This election, like the one in 1979, is at a turning point in our society's history. What future will we have? Socialism or barbarism, to coin a phrase. There are many reasons to vote Labour. To end austerity, Johnson's racism, fibre broadband for all, to name a few. But there is one issue above all else which means I'm going to vote Labour, and so should you. Labour's Green New Deal. All the other issues fall away when you look at the importance of climate change. The disruption Brexit will cause is nothing compared to if we don't take the urgent necessary action on climate chaos. They're right to frame it as a Green New Deal. Back at the time of the financial crisis, caused by the likes of Sajid Javid, I thought there needs to be an economic stimulus similar to how the Americans climbed out of the Great Depression. We also need to tackle the coming climate crisis, so the Green New Deal. Unfortunately, in Gordon Brown, we had a Labour Prime Minister who lacked the political imagination and courage to institute such a thing. He did supply a stimulus, which helps to stop capitalism falling off a cliff completely, but failed to tackle the environmental crisis or indeed do much to help ordinary people. The main people who benefited from Brown's stimulus, especially the quantitative easing, were the same financial class who had caused the crisis in the first place. The rest of us have seen stagnation at best. So I was talking about a Green New Deal over a decade ago, but that was before I was on Facebook or Twitter, so you won't find much online evidence of that. In that time the world has become warmer. The seven hottest years since records began have been in the decades since the crash, and the effects of climate chaos are becoming more apparent. The thing is, if we wait until we see how bad the climate's going to get, it'll be too late. We've got to act now. We should have done this 11 years ago. Now I knew what Roosevelt's New Deal in America in the 1930s was, because I studied it for my history O level, but I'm not sure everyone else does. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or FDR, came to power in March 1933, about three and a half years after the Wall Street crash of 1929. He then instituted a programme of banking reform, public works and welfare. This was it and its legacy, where the closest that uber-capitalist America came to a social democratic welfare state. The New Deal halted the economic collapse in America and ameliorated the worst of the post-crash crisis, and it was that, and the massive federal spending in World War II, that brought America's economy from its anemic state after the crash to its healthy post-war state. New Deal programmes built, re re built or renovated 2,500 hospitals, 45,000 schools, 13,000 parks and playgrounds, 7,800 bridges, 700,000 miles of roads, 1,000 airfields and employed 50,000 teachers through programmes that rebuilt the country's entire rural school system. Not to mention the rural electrification that made the USA into the leading modern country it was in the second half of the 20th century. Only 3% of farm homes were electrified in the early 1930s, but it was not 90% by 1959. Do we really think America would have been the economic powerhouse it was in the second half of the last century without all that infrastructure investment? Sometimes people claim there's a clash between doing good for ordinary working people and saving the planet. But the Green New Deal is a win-win. Like FDR's New Deal, the Green New Deal will see lots of new jobs created while making the country and people's houses a better place to live in. Once there were jobs in coal mining and on offshore oil rigs, but in the future there will be jobs in home insulation and offshore wind farms. If you look at the Labour Green, Deal, Green New Deal manifesto, you'll see they will be bringing 1 million green jobs, 800,000 climate apprenticeships and a massive green transformation fund. Our country needs this. Yes, to tackle the climate emergency, but also to revitalise the deindustrialised parts of the country, such as the north of England, with new sustainable businesses. So, 
You're not a flat earther, and instead realise that the scientists who've spent years studying the climate actually know what they're talking about, then we've got to look the cold, hard reality in the face. We've got to be decarbonising by 2030. That's not my opinion, that's scientific fact. There are only two parties offering that in this election, the Labour Party and the Greens. And out of those two, only Labour has a chance of forming the next government. I'll be voting Labour for a sustainable future with green jobs and warm homes, and so should you.